During the cleanup of the Chernobyl disaster, a wide variety of equipment was used. Vehicles were working where people couldn't, or where people couldn't be because of the critical levels of radiation. After using, these vehicles were driven to a special disposal site, but a few years ago it was suddenly discovered that the most famous disposal site for radioactive equipment was empty. Naturally, there were a lot of questions as to where those hundreds of tons of radioactive metal could go. In this video we're going to try to figure out step by step how that equipment ended up at the disposal sites, and how it disappeared. Today we have a lot of photographs that show a vehicle graveyard in Chernobyl. There are buses, trucks, and armored personnel carriers. Also abandoned there, are personal vehicles of local people, since during the evacuation they could only take the most necessary things. On top of that, most of the people believed that they would soon be able to return home. The Chernobyl vehicle graveyard demonstrates that all types of personnel were called up immediately to deal with the consequences of the disaster. Primarily, it regards the military personnel, security forces, and, of course, the firefighters. There were many volunteers as well, who came on their own transport. After being used in difficult radioactive conditions, the vehicles were sent to a special washing station. The cars that were subjected to decontamination would return to the disaster site and continue performing liquidation tasks. Generally speaking, the destiny of the contaminated vehicles was forked into two scenarios. Some were to be stationed on a restricted territory and wait, and the others would be buried into the ground. But there are places in the Chernobyl exclusion zone, where radiation emissive equipment could be standing on the ground. For the most part, all of the abandoned radioactive equipment was located in one of the villages of the Kiev district. This is a village called Rasoka. In former times, it was a prosperous village, but nowadays it's even lost its status as a settlement. It's a full-fledged radioactive equipment dump site, comprised of deadly garbage. Absolutely all the cars, helicopters, and other equipment had been covered with radioactive particles so heavily, that any further use of them was made impossible. That's why it was decided to relocate them to a designated place and leave them there forever. Among the stored in Rasoka vehicles, were 10 helicopters Mi-8 and Mi-6, military obstacle removers, armored recovery vehicles, floating tracked carriers, wheeled armored carriers, chemical exploration vehicles, and even World War II era equipment. ISU-152, a 15cm anti-tank gun. In total, there were more than 400 various vehicles. Not far from this place a health camp was located. The liquidators and scientists were developing different ways of neutralizing the burial ground. Another equipment station in Chernobyl is located 50 kilometers away from the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. It was named after a nearby village, called Buryakovka, and presently it is known as a contaminated vehicles graveyard. This graveyard isn't located in the village itself, but 4 kilometers away from it. Nonetheless, the settlement has lost its status, nobody lives there, and now this area is considered one of the dead villages of the Chernobyl zone. The full name of the place where radioactive equipment was stored, is called Radioactive Waste Disposal Facility. And the one in Buryakovka was established by the University of Leningrad. Radioactive equipment after the Chernobyl disaster not only was located in the area of the graveyard, but also buried underground. Trenches, which are hiding the highly emissive equipment, have a volume of 25,000 cubic meters. And there are approximately 30 of these grave trenches in Buryakovka. The bottom of the trenches was blanketed with a layer of special clay to prevent nuclides from escaping, and also it prevented vertical groundwater flow. That's why the most heavily contaminated equipment was buried here. The Buryakovka disposal facility is a very important one, and the choice of its location was not an accident. Buryakovka is removed far away from any bodies of water, which can carry radioactive particles and can contaminate huge areas of land. Thus, even the vehicles buried underground don't pose any threat, since the radiation doesn't permeate into the water. Also, the processes that happen in the structure of our Earth don't affect the buried machines. But the equipment beneath the ground isn't as dreadful as the vehicles on the surface. Such machines used to attract a lot of attention from people, who were after an easy profit. And so, let's get back to the main question. Where did all the equipment from the sites go? 
At present, all the graveyards of radioactive equipment are reported to be empty by the satellites. All the cars, helicopters, excavators, and APCs are simply gone. All the equipment was heavily contaminated by radioactive elements. If somewhere it's being used for personal purposes, people, who are interacting with it, are being subjected to lethal exposure. Many journalists, scientists, and regular people, who care about the Chernobyl equipment's destiny, conducted an investigation, and found out where all the vehicles disappeared. It turns out that until 2013, the radioactive equipment, or its parts, were being taken out from the exclusion zone in three stages. The first time the taking out was noted, was back in the Soviet Union. At that time everything was in shortage, including the spare parts, which were readily available at the Chernobyl vehicle graveyard. Some of the parts were scrapped and taken out of the zone, and then used by people as if nothing had ever happened to them. The second wave of intrusion was recorded in the 1990s. That was a fierce wave. At that time people would primarily loot truck engines and radiators. Sometimes they would take the hoods too. On many occasions, the parts were noticed in car markets even in remote cities. Who was taking out the parts, whether it was the people connected to authorities, or regular scavengers, is still unknown. The third wave was recorded in the 21st century. People would take what was left valuable from those radioactive graveyards, and sell it for scrap. I didn't just mention the three stages until 2013 for no reason. Because after 2013, the equipment was completely gone from all of the graveyards. Just at the end of 2012, the equipment was there. And in the first half of 2013 it was gone. So, there is a theory, that in 2013, this equipment was taken out by the Ukrainian authorities, and after some renovation in 2014, it was sent to the east of Ukraine. But I haven't found any evidence supporting this theory. And even if we assume, that authorities somehow managed to transport those rusty APCs across half of the country without being noticed, still, repairing what was left of them would be too expensive and almost futile. The most plausible argument is this. At the end of 2012, the disposal sites were eliminated officially by the authorities, and the remains of the equipment were moved to the vector plant for recycling and burying. The territory of more than 20 hectares, was occupied by abandoned equipment in Chernobyl. Many people were tempted by those abandoned cars. The vehicle graveyard was estimated to be worth $46 million. This data was reported in 1986, when the disaster had just happened. For that time, it's a huge sum. The ones, who weren't afraid to get contaminated by radiation, would come to look at the graveyard, and, oftentimes, had questions about when it would be possible to buy out all the cars and then sell them at a higher price. Everyone really wanted to obtain this treasure, but Chernobyl had other plans for this equipment. Due to the colossal level of radiation, using these vehicles will never be possible. They will decay and collapse hundreds of years before all the traces of radiation are gone. Talking about the vehicle graveyard, I couldn't skip mentioning the ship graveyard. This graveyard is in the city of Chernobyl, in the Pripyat River Bay. The ships can be found near the former ship repair plant, on a so-called island in the city. These vessels transported cargo for the Chernobyl nuclear plant cleanup, and now they are moored here forever, because of the radioactive contamination. The ship graveyard in Chernobyl is comprised of partially or completely submerged scrap metal. Time and scavengers show no mercy to this memorable place. All kinds of metal seekers officially or unofficially cut up these ships. In the satellite images, we can see how the ships were vanishing. This image was taken at the end of 2006. And this image was taken in 2012. It's obvious that the ships are becoming fewer. By the way, there's one interesting fact. One of the vessels from this graveyard became a prototype of a ship in the game Stalker. To summarize this story about the Chernobyl equipment, we can conclude, that most of the radioactive metal ended up in the hands of regular people, and now, the emissive metal can be encountered anywhere. Additionally, some of the parts were melted and repurposed, and their further fate is unknown.